This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Hey, beautiful people, I'm Lucy, and today we're talking all about the RGB tone curve in Lightroom, specifically how to use those red, green, and blue channels. Now, I have already done a basic video on the tone curve, so if you've never used this tool before or if it kind of scares you, definitely go check that one out first for an easy intro on using it. And by the way, I make tons of easy Lightroom tutorials here on YouTube, so definitely subscribe if you wanna see more of those. All right, let's get into Lightroom. All right, so you can find the tone curve on the right-hand side here. It is the second panel down. When you open it up, it kind of looks like a scary graph there. Now, I have gone way more in depth about this basic tone curve in my other video, so check that out if you're not sure about what this is at all. It will definitely really help uh, if you've seen that before this video. But basically the uh, basic tone curve is used to adjust the contrast of your image. So above this line, you're making your image brighter, below the line, you're making the image darker, but you can use these points along it to adjust the specific tones. So here we have the black points, shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and the white points of the image. So you can adjust specific points specific tones in your image using this basic panel. Now, the thing that is different once we go into the RGB channels, which are down here, we can go into red, green, and blue, is that we are actually using these to inject and change the colors of your image. Um, so we'll just sort of go over to the red one here, and we can take a look that when we add the color, we're totally changing the color of our image both ways. Now, it's interesting when we add the red here, you can kind of see we're adding red, red's mixing with the blue, we're getting kind of a purpley vibe. But when I take it away, we aren't subtracting red, we're actually adding cyan to the image. So on either side of these, we are always working with the opposite. And stay with me here, because I know this is where it gets complicated. But for each of the channels, we have the red, green, and blue channel. Above the line, we are adding more of that channel's color. So for red, above the line, we are adding more red to the image. But when we go below the line, we're not subtracting red, we're not desaturating red, which is what a lot of people think below the line in the tone curve means. It's not about saturation. What it is about is we are changing the color of those red pixels. And how it works is the opposite of red in the RGB scale is cyan. So you can see here when these are mixed together, the opposite of red is cyan. So when we actually bring this down, we are turning those reds, we're mixing cyan into those reds, and it affects everything in our image because every pixel in our image has some red in it, right? And here's actually a really great image from Zoner Photo Studio that really shows how these actually work. So the red channel, we see the red and then the cyan, green, above the line, green, below, magenta, blue, blue and yellow. So that's a great visualizer of how this is actually working and how you're injecting those colors into your image. So let's take a look at this in an actual image. I have this one that is sort of a photo taken at dusk. And as you can see, there's not much happening here in terms of the colors. We kind of have a hint of some colors, but this is a perfect example of something that the tone curve can really make a lot more interesting. Now, a look that I really love for these kind of photos is when the sky has sort of some more pink in it, some more purple, really hit on those dusk kind of colors. So what I would say is we're gonna go into the green channel, and that is because the opposite of green is magenta, which is sort of like that pinkish color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this curve to inject those colors into the image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down option and I'm gonna add some points onto the image. So I've added the points here in the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the midtones down and you can kind of see they show you uh, with the image here where the tones of that color are. So I'm gonna bring them down and you can already see that it's starting to turn more pink and very little changes have a big impact on your image. So you can be subtle with this, especially when you're starting. And I'm also gonna bring down the highlights because it's really that sky where we're seeing uh, those changes and maybe just that white point 
I'll bring it down slightly. So already, before, after, this is the only thing I have changed about this image. I haven't done any other editing. This is a massive change. Um, so you can see it's all about creating a look that you want for your photo. Now, the next thing that I would do with this is I would go into the blue channel and again, hold down option and make your point on the curve. And I'm just gonna bring up the midtones there to be a bit more highlighted. Again, if I do it too much, I'm, I'm kind of going into a look that I'm not, that I don't want for this photo but just a little bit looks really nice. I mean, kind of get a nice gradient in the sky. And I think I'll put a little bit more in the highlights there as well. So as you can see, there's the before, there's the after, and we've added a lot to this photo. The thing I would basically do at this point is I'd probably just bring the black points down and the shadows down just so that there's more of a contrast here in the skyline of the trees against the backdrop. And, uh, I think that that looks really great. Now, what you might be wondering right now is why use the tone curve to do this change and not use the temperature and the tint to do this? And a lot of people kind of wonder this. And, and the truth is there's lots of different ways that you can do things in Lightroom, but I'm gonna show you right now why I think the tone curve is a better option for something like this. If I go on to the same photo, again, just unedited, and I kind of try to replicate it here, and let's do a, a reference so I can put this is the tone curve version. This is the temperature and tint version. And I try to kind of replicate it. I can get, I can get kind of close, um, but not exactly quite the same. And the main difference is, is the temperature and the tint just is a blanket effect to everything in your photo. So if I zoom in here, you can really see the difference that the tone curve, because I could choose where I wanted to affect the image on the midtones and the highlights, it has a much more uh, kind of natural feel to it. Whereas this, the water is just all tinted pink. Um, and even in the trees here, even if I brought those blacks down on this one, even in the trees, um, they have been tinted to be that pink color. Whereas here, it really is the true black. So that is the difference on why you might wanna use the tone curve over the temperature and tint in a photo like this. So let's check out the RGB tone curve in a couple other images, just so you can get the full idea of how you can be using it. So we'll pop over to this one here. Now, this is with the edits to the tone curve that I've already made. This is the before of the image. So basically with the changes in the red, green, and blue channel, we've kind of given this photo sort of that nostalgic vibe. I kind of feel like it looks a bit like Kodak film. And one of the things with film photos that you'll often find is that there's actually some magenta, some pinks, some reds in the shadows. So for this one, I actually went into the green uh, color channel here. And the biggest part where I actually changed some things was down in the shadows. So you can just see if I lift that back up, uh, that's what it looks like. And some people might think, oh, maybe heighten the greens. Totally something you could do, just not the look that I'm necessarily going for. And I like that idea of sort of that uh, rusty green color. So if you just bring down those shadows a bit and add a little bit of magenta into the shadows, it really gives your photo sort of a film look to it. And then in this one too, I just added a slight amount in the highlights there. The next thing I did in this one was in the blue channel. I just brought them down slightly into the yellow. So if I bring it back this way, you kind of see we have just that even color palette, but a yellow tone can really highlight the green and just kind of make it more interesting. So I just brought the midtones down more into the yellow and I brought the shadows as well down into that yellow zone. And then the last thing I did in this red channel is I brought uh, the reds down more so into the cyan. So where this really affects the image is the sky. So if I just take that back up there, uh, you can kind of see the sky is sort of pinkish um, white, which doesn't necessarily complement the green very much in my opinion. So if we just bring that red down into more of the cyan, then we're getting kind of uh, more of a hint of a blue in those highlights more uh, blue in the sky as well. And then what I actually did down here was I did bring up the red in the shadows, 
Like I said, I kind of like having um, some rusty red colors in the shadows for photos like this because it does create that kind of film look. And you can really see here is where it's making a big difference when I bring up the reds there. So again, we'll just look at that before and after side by side. All that's been edited in this one as well is just changes to the tone curve. And you can just see that we really created a look for this image. Now for the last one that I wanna show you guys, it's really just showing you what you can do with this and how you can use it in different parts of your image to really create some cool looks, maybe take things a step further. So here's after all the edits in the tone curve and this is before. So you can totally see we changed so much about this photo just using the tone curve. So I'm gonna go over what I did on this one on how to get those colors. So one of the things that I really like to do is again, go in the green and I love, um, for things with skies and stuff like that, I really love this look of the pink sky. You can see I've kind of done that in a couple of these photos. So if you wanna get a pink sky look, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add the points here and let's just flatten this out so you can really see it. So I'm gonna hit option and I'm gonna make quite a few points on here. And why I do that is just so that you really are only affecting that one basic area. So I'm gonna add a point right here. And so we're gonna take it down on the green, which means we're adding in magenta right on where the highlights are. Now, depending on how far you bring it down, it's gonna add more. So this is getting very surreal and over the top. Um, but just a little bit, like say around here, adds some sort of intrigue, kind of makes it a bit dreamlike. Now, the other thing that I did with the green channel is actually down here, I added, uh, made it a bit more green down in the shadows. And that's because most of the shadows are these green parts of the image. And I do want them to look a little bit greener. So obviously that's too much, but just a little bit kind of makes it stand out more. Now, the next thing that I did with this one was go into the red channel because we know the opposite of red is cyan. And we can definitely see that this building here has that kind of teal cyan look. So what I did was go into those shadows and just bring it down slightly. So you can see if we just bring that down a little bit, it kind of brings all those tones together. And then to finish it off in the blues, all I did was actually I made it more blue. So I didn't bring anything into that yellow just because that would then start to kind of maybe throw off some of the colors that I've been trying to build. So I added just a little bit of blue in the mid-tones. We added a bit more blue here in the shadows and then also in the highlights added some more blue and all of that works together to give us this final image. So as you can see, using the red, green, and blue channels of the tone curve gives us so much power to affect very specific elements of our photo. So as you can see, this is the before again, and it's just tonally very boring. Everything kind of blends in, and there's not a lot of interest happening with color in this photo. And then in the after, we were able to really target the highlights and add some uh, magenta and some blue in there, target the shadows, and just basically target all the tones of this image to make something that is much more visually intriguing. So that's how easy it is to use the RGB tone curve in Lightroom. And I have to say a big thank you to the team over at Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Storyblocks gives you access to an unlimited library of over 1 million high quality video clips, after effects, templates, songs, illustrations, and sound effects. So yeah, that's a lot of stuff, which is amazing if you are a creator like me. I make videos here on YouTube, but I also do client work. And I always used to find it was such a headache when I just wanted to find a quick B-roll clip or a cool transition. And then I had to worry about usage rights, fees and royalties. And it's really important that you know what's up with that when you are doing work for a client. So what I love about Storyblocks is that it completely solves this problem. It's so simple. You can use the content anywhere and everything is completely royalty free, whether it's for commercial use or personal use. So I can grab a quick clip for YouTube and I can impress clients with amazing drone shots, which is pretty great. So click the link in the description below to learn more about Storyblocks. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this one, definitely subscribe. I love you guys. See you next week. Peace out.